Okay, today's presentation is Brent Okeson talking about avoiding rear end collisions. Brent. Hey, hello everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We wanna to talk about some things that caused uh, a lot of our auto claims this last year. And we'll, we'll talk about some details about that, but we wanna to learn to avoid uh, hitting into the back of another car, avoiding those rear end collisions. And uh, so hopefully this will raise awareness to you today about things that you can watch for when you're on the roadway and, and working through traffic and, and things on a daily basis. So a few things we wanna look at is uh, it, it applies to defensive driving. And uh, this is something we have to think about when we get behind the wheel each day, uh, it's on us when we're, we're sitting there, it's on us to be responsible and to drive safely. And uh, regardless of what the conditions are, regardless of what other drivers and actions are going on around us, we can do our best to try to drive safely and be defensive as a driver. And that's to avoid accidents and, and keep everybody safe on the roadway. Getting from point A to point B without uh, any accident or injury. And that's really the goal. And, and so that's part of it. Uh, so we wanna do all we can to prevent collisions. And, and what a preventable collision is, it's where the driver fails to do everything reasonable to avoid the crash. So you don't wanna be like this guy in the picture here following too close, uh, because if that red car in front stops really fast, you may not have time to react. You may not be able to stop in time. And uh, you don't wanna have that on you to, to be responsible for causing an accident because you were driving unsafe and not doing your part to, to be a responsible driver. Um, so remember that defensive driving really is important in all that we do in our driving actions. And uh, this last year, we looked at this and we had uh, the top five auto accidents. It was actually rear end collision was number five on the list. It was really high. And so we wanted to focus on that of how we can prevent uh, hitting into the back end of other cars. And uh, in 2020, you'll see here, we had 27 claims um, involving rear end collisions. So I'd like to share with you a few examples examples of those today that we can learn from and raise awareness to. Uh, a lot of times these happen where the car in front stopped abruptly and uh, there wasn't time for the driver to react in time and they ended up hitting into the back of them. And that happens a lot. That happens in traffic when things are stacking up and there's, there's rush hour traffic or things start slowing up ahead. Um, it can be hard when all the cars are stopping really fast. You may not have time to react and you may not be aware enough to react in time. Um, so we need to watch for those conditions, um, always watching ahead and being alert for those because there were several claims that involved uh, situations like that. We also saw claims on off ramps where cars were getting off the off ramp coming to a stop and, and it maybe stopped and backed up faster than they expected. And even at the stop sign at the end of the off ramp, there were some accidents that we'll, we'll look at too. Um, sometimes the uh, you anticipate the other driver going in front of you and sometimes they have to stop really fast. Uh, it could be at a stop sign or something like that and you could hit into them um, by assuming that they're going and, and they're not. Um, other claims that we saw this last year were due to distractions. The driver was looking down, reaching for something else inside of the car or, or adjusting some settings or something in the car. They took their eyes off the road and uh, just for a second there, but looked up and hit into the back of another car. So those are things we can learn from. We want to watch for traffic. We want to watch what's going ahead and making sure that we're not distracted so that we can avoid rear end collisions. Um, so the best thing that we can do is always recognize the hazard. When you're driving down the highway or down any roadway, use your senses. Always look around. Use your sight and your sounds and your intuition to uh, be aware of that. Constantly be scanning the road, paying attention to what's going on as cars are merging in and out or turning or slowing or speeding up. Just be aware of those things as you're driving down the roadways. And I like to ask myself, what if, you know, what if a car stops really fast in front of me? Would I have time to react? Would I perceive that and react in time to stop safely and, and avoid that, that accident? Uh, what if a car cuts you off? What if they slam on their brakes? What if a, a object falls out of a vehicle in front of you and, and you know, you have to get out of the way. Those are things to think about as you're driving down the roadways, recognizing those hazards and paying attention. And uh, just maybe practice that as you drive today and as you go, go forward, think about uh, those what if scenarios. Think about how to keep yourself and your vehicle safe as you drive around. Speeding is one of the, the most dangerous things. In fact, it's the number one unsafe driving behavior that contributes to collisions and, and violations on the roadways. Uh, people going too fast for the conditions, you know, for for speed, for traffic, for visibility. Um, you have to think about the risk. It may not be worth putting yourself at risk and going too fast and uh, possibly hitting into somebody else or, or following too close that causes an accident. So always watch your speed 
and be aware of that. That can help with, with avoiding rear end collisions. No tailgating. We absolutely don't want to do any tailgating. That's a very risky maneuver. Uh, aggressive drivers will often do this. They're, they're frustrated that somebody's in their way. They're, they're in a hurry or they're agitated and they follow too closely. And sometimes they, they get into accidents from that. It's, it's really not worth putting yourself and others at risk. And uh, so we definitely do not recommend doing any tailgating. It's important to keep a good space um, between you and all the vehicles around you. So watch for that. And if you do have a tailgater, if you do have somebody behind you that's, that's annoyed and they're on your tail and they're trying to get around, the best thing you can do is just let them go around you. Move over to, the, to a lane to the right, let them pass you on the left. Um, but you don't have to put yourself at risk and you don't have to speed and violate any laws uh, because they're on your tail. But, you do want to do your part to let them go and get around you. So what is a safe following distance? How do we know? You know, if you look at this picture, is this driver here following too close or is that good, good for the traffic? Well, it depends. And there's a lot of factors that tie into that. It could be uh, that they're going really slow. And so it doesn't look like they're, they're at, at a, you know, a hazard there if they're going really slow, but if they're going really fast, you're going to need some extra space uh, between you and the car in front. So watch for those things. And there's a lot of factors that we'll look at that, do, that come into determining what a safe following distance is, but it's really up to you, the driver, and your responsibility to use your good judgment and make sure that you're driving at a good distance from, from the car in front of you. And then what affects how quickly we can stop? There's also a lot of factors that go into that, which we're gonna look at um, right now. So it takes your brain a little bit to perceive that there's time to make a change and they call this the perception distance. So it takes your brain time to recognize that, hey, cars are stopping up ahead or there's something in front of me and I need to slow down. I need to control the vehicle. And then there's the reaction distance. The time that it takes from your brain to perceive that to actually making the, the maneuvers with your hands and feet to control the vehicle, to push on the brakes, to, to turn the steering wheel, whatever that is. It takes time, one eighth of a second for your brain to perceive and then to react um, for that distance to start applying the brake. And then you have the braking distance, which is where you've applied the brake to where it comes to, to a complete stop. And that varies depending on um, how hard you push on the brake or you know the speed that you're going, the distance that you have in front of you. There's lots of factors there, but we have to realize that it takes time to perceive it, to react, and then for the car to actually come to a stop. That's why we need to have a really good um, following distance there. So they call that braking distance or stopping distance. And uh, average cars go on average, you know, speeds and, and normal size, you know, average, average conditions there. If you're going 30 miles per hour, it might take approximately 153 feet to come to a stop. And you can see the faster you go, the higher the speed the farther the distance is to come to a safe stop. So it could be 70 miles per hour, you might need up to 500 feet um, to safely come to a stop. So when you're driving the type of car that you're in, what is your stopping distance? That's something to, something to think about. There's a lot of factors that go into that. And those factors are road conditions. Uh, if it's really wet or slick roads, or if there's different uh, objects on the you know surface, any kind of surface material on the roadway, um, it could be different for for needing a stopping distance longer. Uh, visibility is a factor. So if you have foggy conditions or low lighting or, or different visibility issues, you might need you know, a longer distance to stop as well. Uh, the speed that you're traveling, the traffic, how busy it is, if there's a lot of cars or if it's open roadway, that, that plays into the decision. Um, also the weight of the vehicle, a larger, heavier vehicle or a vehicle pulling a trailer is gonna take a, a longer stopping distance as well. Tire conditions, the quality of the tire, the, the, the quality of the tread, if there's good tread left on the tire, um, that's all a factor and, and the traction that you have. Um, so you as the driver, it's up to you to just be aware of all these conditions and all these things going on to decide what's a good safe following distance. And uh, remember that if you're, if you're going fast or if there's low visibility, you wanna give yourself some extra space so you don't have a rear end collision or hit somebody in front of you. Um, there's a few ways to calculate stopping distance. So one is the three second rule. And the way this works is you'll look at a car in front of you and if they pass a sign or a post or something on the side of the road, you can count for three seconds following that. And if you get to that point, that same point that you started at three seconds later, then that's how you can estimate a, a three second rule. And that's just a guideline. It's something that you can go by. Um, but if there's poor conditions like 
low visibility or heavy traffic or you know other things like that, you'll want to give yourself an extra second uh, for each of those poor conditions. And one of the ways that I learned when I was uh, younger learning to drive is they told us uh, put one car length in between you and the car in front for every 10 miles per hour that you're going. So for example, if you're going 50 miles an hour, you'd want to have at least five car lengths between you and the car in front. And uh, again, these aren't uh, hard and fast rules. These are something that you can um, use for good judgment, but it really is up to you to be aware of what's going on with all of those factors and conditions that you're driving in and make sure you're, you're going at a safe following distance. When it comes to traffic, there's lots of things to watch for. And there's times when cars could stop abruptly in front of you, or you might think they're going to go, and, and sometimes they don't. And so traffic conditions are something we need to watch for to prevent uh, rear end collisions. We, we saw a couple examples. I know a couple people personally that have had issues at stop signs where the car in front of them will get off at an off ramp and they'll come to the stop sign and they'll stop there. And when it's time to go, there will be some cross traffic coming. And so they, they act like they're about to go and then they stop and the driver behind thinks, well, they were going and turns out they didn't, they had to stop and, and they hit into the back of the car. Um, that's something to watch for. So you can give yourself some extra space, maybe leave a whole car length in front of you and the car in front of you when you come to a stop. And this could be at a, a stop sign or a stoplight, but leave a good, good amount of space there in case that driver in front of you tries to fake you out and acts like they're going and then stops. It'll give you time to react and uh, not hit into the back of them. So watch for those stop signs, watch for off ramps. Uh, you can also watch for crosswalks, knowing where these crosswalks are and anticipating those areas where people might be crossing, where cars might stop ahead of you that's a way to prevent uh, hitting into the back of somebody else as well. Slow moving vehicles, those are things to watch for. And we know that buses like school buses will often stop regularly. And so if you're following a school bus or if there's a train crossing, you know, be aware that they might be stopping and, and anticipate that. Those are things that you can watch for in traffic that might help you to avoid um, these types of um, hazards on the roadways. So watch for the traffic. Uh, we want to make sure we eliminate distractions. We talk about phones and texting in our defensive driving class, and it's it's a big deal. It really is. It's a huge distraction. It's even more of a distraction than people realize. And so we want to make sure that we turn the phones off, silence them, and definitely don't text and drive um, because even taking your eyes off the road for a few seconds can cause you to uh, not be aware of what's happening up ahead of you. So don't take that risk. If it's a risk to you, um, take some action today to, to put the phones down and not let it become a problem and compromise your safety because it's just not worth it. It's not worth having an accident over that. So we need to anticipate those things. And one of the things you can do is know your routes. So I drive along the Wasatch Front every week and I know there's certain areas along my route that uh, traffic will back up. And, and sometimes of the day it's fine, but I know there are certain times that every day there's certain points in that route that the traffic's a little more busy or or cars could be slowing or, or backing up. And so you can think about your routes, you can think about where you drive regularly and plan your route. Maybe there's a better way to go. Maybe it's a, a safer option or maybe there's less congestion in the traffic that way. Um, but having that awareness of where you're going and what's ahead and anticipating that cars could be slowing down in front of you or there could be a more congested area, anticipating those things can really help you. Um, avoid an accident there too. And I know those of you that drive around, you know, along the Wasatch Front, you know those areas, you know where the, where those problem areas are, where there's construction zones, where there's, um, you know, places where cars are channeled together where they might slow down and back up. Those are things to be aware of and watch for. One of the best things you can do in all of your driving um, conditions is always maintain a space cushion. And what that is, it's a buffer that's all around your vehicle. It's behind you, it's all around, and it's being aware of that. So not following too close will give you some space, but also on the sides, if you don't have people on each side of you and you have plenty of space like that, you can see you have better visibility. And if somebody were to stop really fast in front of you, you can know if it's okay to switch over to another lane and, and react and, and anticipate that. So scan frequently, always be aware, and try to maintain a good space cushion around your vehicle as you're driving. Um, one of the things that I see that often happens with, with rear end collisions is you'll be on a highway and uh, traffic will be backing up really fast and everybody's slowing down really fast. And sometimes there's one guy that just doesn't react as quick as others and they, they can make it hard on everybody else behind them. And so if you do see traffic slowing down up ahead, I would recommend uh, slowing down gradually, 
maybe even pump the brakes just a little bit to, to let the driver behind you know that you're, you're starting to slow down, that there's a reason to slow down. And if you can do that gradually, it helps everybody else out, not just yourself, but all other drivers on the highway will see that it's time to start slowing down and there's something up ahead. Um, so try to maintain that space cushion and, and you know, be courteous as a driver to, to help slow down gradually. So there's lots of things to watch for um, to prevent rear end collisions. There's, there's lots of factors and conditions that we have to watch for, um, but it really does come down to you, the driver, to take that personal responsibility to make sure we're doing it safely, that we're, we're driving defensively and that we're aware of what's going on in front of us. Um, have a plan. Always think about your routes and where you're driving. Try to anticipate um, those areas that might be more, more hazardous than others. Always use your senses. Keep a safe following distance and consider the risk. You know, if you're following too close or going too fast, you know, you're putting yourself and others at risk and it's not worth it. Um, so just a reminder today, those are things to watch for and hopefully we can uh, avoid these auto accidents and not hit into other cars. Um, so thanks everybody for joining. Is there any questions out there that you guys see? Any questions, Jason? Folks, if you have any questions, type those into the chat box and we'll get Brent to answer those right now. Great presentation there, important, important subject. This is one, boy, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you think your following distance um, is, you know, I do pretty well. Well, <laughs> challenge you today. Check that as you're driving home and see really what your following distance is. And uh, what you'll find is the average person out there is is uh, probably a little less than three seconds. And, and some people are down to one or two, so. Or, or the average is more like one. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. All right, I'm looking there. I'm not seeing any questions there. Brent, final word. Hey, everybody be safe as you drive home and drive around today and, and going forward, let's be safe and be aware of those things. Hope you all have a great day. Thanks for joining. All right, folks, thanks for, thanks for attending today. If you do want to attend the, our next presentation um, and you haven't signed up, go to our website, utahtrust.gov and click on training and events. You can sign up there and we'll be back on at 10 o'clock. Have a safe day.